Hi, my name is Franca Maria Ando, and this is my new podcast called The Three Lemons. The Three Lemons is about creatives who take things that are normally plain and boring and make them into exciting, beautiful things that people can enjoy. Hi, welcome to another edition of Three Lemons the podcast for creatives. Today we have Nana Anoff, an artist that I'm personally very proud of. Nana's work is amazing and we like to ask him a few questions about his work, who he is and what being a creative means to him. Nana, I'm so glad you could make it. Thank you very much for having me. So Nana, tell me a bit about you as a child. I'm always interested in people's childhood experiences. Like, How did you know that you were going to be an artist. Was there any indication when you were a child? Well, when I was growing up, one thing was I used to, like maybe most children, I used to scribble and draw on my grandma's walls and cushion covers. Okay. And that she didn't find interesting at all. So I remember growing up, my mom used to work at the statistical service. So they have these computer papers. It used to be large. The computers used to fill one whole room back then. Wow. So she used to bring me those papers and then, so they were my first like sketch parts and then I used to draw on them. And then whenever I wasn't feeling well and I went to work with her, then I get to make some money because I, I would draw and then even she went with me, then give me money. That's how far I remember. No, no, you never told me this story. Yeah, that I, you, you were did, you were hustling did, from an early age. <laughs> at an early age, yes. But that's so interesting. Like, so basically, your mom knew, understood your gift, and was actually bringing this paper home because she knew you would want to draw on it. Or yes, I guess to save grandma's uh, cushion covers, which were white, you know, and you know, so yeah, she. I don't think my mom knew much about art, and okay. you know, but. She knew I could draw, and so um, for primary school, yes, I had to, yeah, I, I was drawing. Wow. And even for some of the teachers, when they were doing their diagrams, um, like a flower or so, some of them would come and get me. And I remember my primary headmistress, one Mrs. Jan, mm -hmm. also at Bema Camp, also helped a bit, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. It's amazing how in the creative journey you always find people along the way who are part of your story. Like, they hold your hand at some point or encourage you or discourage you. You know, there's always the good and the bad, but, you know, here you are, you um, an amazing artist. These are events which um, I've never, um, most of the time, I've never even thought of, but yeah. So yeah. tell me, like, I know you work with a lot of how would you describe your materials? And now looking back at my materials, when I was a bit older, I used to sculpt with uh, uh, milk cans and milo cans. And that one, um, my mom wasn't really very ha happy because I, I cut myself when I'm oh. cutting. And so I used to make, and another friend of mine, we used to make co-pots and I'll make us and then, she would then sell the little coupons to the little girls in the neighborhood. So I was just reflecting, oh, so maybe I've always had this and I didn't even, you know. But most kids in my neighborhood or um, once in a while made their own toys. So, wow. so that, yeah. I think that's an interesting point because... Yeah, when we were little, we did stuff for ourselves. We kind of entertained ourselves yeah. because really, the, there was nothing <laughs> except a on a oh. on a Saturday, Sunday uh, evening. Sunday evening. That was the main and entertainment. And that was the talking point. Talking the point. Boring, point which never ended. <laughs> you couldn't wait for it to finish. <laughs> but like we had to create our own yeah. entertainment, and I think that made us creatives yeah. because. Nobody's going to buy you a toy car. No. Nobody's going to buy you a little coal pot. So no. you had to make yeah. it. Yeah. So do, do you think that, I mean, taking you on a different angle, we'll come back to you, but do you think that this generation or the younger children may be less of makers because they're used to things being done for them? I, I believe so. I believe so. Because um, 
I mean, we were pressured. I mean, you you had to do it, or even if you didn't want to do it, your friend was doing it, and so it was normal. But yeah. these days, with the playstations and the, yeah, yeah, a lot of time <laughs> spent on. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's so true. Yeah. So tell me, um, again, I, I like the materials that you use. I know, you know, I've been to your studio, and I mean the 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 this everything, batteries, motors. Car parts, bicycle parts, bicycle. I mean, somebody will call that parts. junk, right? Yeah. But cooking you, utensils, cooking utensils. But you convert it into beautiful stuff. What drives a piece? Like, what comes into your spirit and makes you decide this and this will make this? Normally, I don't have the full story, um, or maybe I may just have part of the story, and then. Uh, that becomes interesting because then I go fishing. But then I have the more easier part when I see a material and straightforward, I know this is what, um, this is, it tells its own story. Mm. You know, then that, it's way easier. I know, okay, this is where this one wants me to put it. But anyway, so I have like two kinds of creative parts. When I have to look for materials to tell my story and then I find a material that has its own story, mm -hmm. and then um, just, you know, put it in together. And I like the fact that you use the word story, because I know that ever since I've known you, even your art tells amazing stories. Like, I, I, I've I, seen um, one particular piece that I will never forget, where um, there was a car that had broken down, and the driver had gotten down and was pushing, <laughs> and all these Makola women were sitting in the car, and the driver was pushing this car, <laughs> which must have been double heavy because these women were like yeah. quite solid. And you, do you, do you, do you see yourself as a storyteller? Um, well, I don't think so. I'm mm. just, I'm just, uh, what is the word? Uh, giving a commentary on, on on what I see. Um, so these things happen, and I happen to like chance upon them in stories or. Or visually see mm. it happen, and then I replace you use the art yeah. too. So, and yeah. and like you you were doing more art in terms of like on canvas yeah. painting um, than you're doing now. Yeah. Um, was that like a transition or what? Um, what? What? It was a subtle one. Um, I I used to paint, and then all of a sudden now the metals. I wake up in the morning. And the paints don't talk to me anymore. Mm. The metals keep calling out to mm. me. So you know, then I'm I'm driven towards that. I'm mm. hoping that this year I'll go back to painting back to as painting. well. Yeah. But I Actu think it's interesting that you actually say, I'm, I'm I'm painting. You can, if you can see my <laughs> <laughs> you always have evidence that you're working. <laughs> but I I think it's interesting that you say the metals call you because I think. Uh, art is, is an amazing, deeply spiritual thing because sometimes you think, how does the idea even drop into you for you to now produce it, mm. for me to look at it and feel happy or sad? Or, and you're quite political sometimes in your, in your work. Like, you, you address tough issues. Mm. Is that deliberate? No, that's... It's, we, are in, we are in this together, or we, it's something which is playing around us, so sometimes it, come, it comes up, not deliberately, but mm. it's, it's a story or a subject we need to, to talk address. about. Yeah, our address, yeah, thank you. And I know women are also big on your... Yes. Why? Yes. Why? What is it about why, women that... You know, it's... I grew up with my mother and uh, my grandmother, and so growing up, they had their own ways, and I thought Charlotte, this way was crude. But as I've grown up, I realized that that was the right way. I mean, mm. you know, my grandmother never spent more than she... What we had is what we were going to use. She wasn't going to go to the next person to collect. And when she died, she, she had money for even me. Oh, wow. You know? Or even before she died, she said, and I know when I die, you know, the family is going to come, tell you to pay some money. I have this money saved down. Oh, wow. And she was 97. Wow. Now take this and even have some for my wife. I know they will come after you and say you have to do something for you. So take this. Oh, this wow. is, and I reflect. I say, can I do this <laughs> for my children? 
But the interesting yeah. thing you said was, I think the word is like they knew how to manage. Yes. And, 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 and they managed with what they had. And my grandmother never threw anything away. The empty milk or the empty milo can became a drinking cup. Mm. And when you mess around with something, do you know how old this object is? Don't go touch it. It's older than you and even older than your mother. You know, stuff like that. So, I mean, recycling and reusing stuff, you know. Are you connecting yeah. that with your art, like right now? I think I'm overdoing it now. No, but that's it's probably where it also comes from, that importance possible. of yeah. not throwing things away because yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah. Things that people are throwing away, you are now recreating and doing beautiful things. Isn't that uh, amazing? A friend of mine once said, you know, you and God seems to do the same. Things people reject, you take them out and then polish them up. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, think, uh, I, I think, yeah, God is uh, a creator yeah. and so are you. So, no offense, forgive me. I think he's okay with you. <laughs> I think he's okay with you. What yeah. advice would you give young creatives, like people who have an interest in art and, you know, what, what, what would you say... Um, should be a word of advice. It's not an easy road, it's never going to be easy. And so, go with what you feel in your heart. People will not understand you, your parents, your... But if you feel strongly about it, keep pushing. And one day, hey, the light will shine. Bye.